Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, Lord our God, you call whom you will and send them where you choose. We thank you for sending your servant Will abroad to be an apostle to the low countries, to turn them from the worship of idols to serve you, the living God. And we entreat you to preserve us from the temptation to exchange the perfect freedom of your service for servitude to false gods and to idols of our own devising. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of the Kings. Now the people of the city said to Elisha, The location of this city is good, and as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of water and threw the salt into it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have made this water wholesome from now on. Neither death nor this miscarriage shall come forth from it. So the water has been wholesome to this day, according to the word that Elisha spoke. He went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go away, bald head, go away, bald head. When he turned around and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two she-bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the boys. From there he went on to Mount Carmel and then returned to Samaria. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 98, the first four verses, which are found beginning on page 727 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 98, verses 1 to 4 which we'll recite together in unison. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. 
And will not grant God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate Willibar, which um, was not a household name. I'll read to you a little bit about him. His life and ministry and labors are known about through the Venerable Bede's ecclesiastical history and a biography by his younger kinsman, Alf Hume. He was born in Northumbria about 658 and from the age of seven was brought up and educated at Bishop Wilford's monastery at Ripon. For 12 years, 678 to 690, he studied in Ireland, where he acquired his thirst for missionary work. In 690, with 12 companions, he set out for Frisia, Holland, a, a pagan area that was increasingly coming under the, domin the domination of the Christian Franks. The Bishop Wilfred and a few other Englishmen had made short missionary visits, but with little success. With the aid of the Frankish rulers, Rillebrod established his base at Utrecht, and in 695, Pope Sergius ordained him a bishop and gave him the name of Clement. In 698, he founded the monastery of Echternach near Trier. His, his work was uh, frequently disturbed by the conflict of the pagan Frisians with the Franks, and for a time he left the area to work among the Danes. For three years, in 719 to 722, he was assisted by Boniface, who at a later time came back to Frisia to strengthen the mission. In a very real sense, Willebrod prepared the way for Boniface's more successful achievements by his relations with the Frankish rulers and the papacy who thus became joint sponsors of missionary work. He died at Echternach on November 7th, 739. We have today these strange readings, the first and second Kings, in which we're told that uh, Elisha, um, first of all, purified water by adding salt, and second of all, caused uh, several she-bears to come out of the forest to maul the boys who taunted him. Since I am not bald, I could ignore this reading altogether. No one will ever call me bald head, I don't think, or at least not in the near future. But I don't want to ignore this reading altogether because it's kind of gross. And I think we should stop and try to figure out what to do with a reading like this, which is kind of gross. It's, we get it in, con in conjunction with the reading from St. Luke's Gospel of the story, the, the parable of the unjust judge, which is also a little bit gross that Jesus teaches his people that um, when he teaches when he tells them this parable, that we should learn something, listen to what the unjust judge says. What does the unjust ju judge say? The unjust judge does not say that I will give this woman justice because I'm here for justice. I believe in justice and she deserves justice. He says, I'll give this woman justice so she'll leave me alone. And then he expects us to learn a lesson about how we should pray always, suggesting that there's something like God that is similar to the unjust judge. I don't like this parable. It's not a good parable. So there are some important lessons for us to learn, I think, from these kind of gross readings that we have today. One of the lessons is this, that people are mean. There's, I could put it another way, but I'm not supposed to say it in church. So um, that people are mean, unkind, unfair unjust. They do stupid things, wrong things, hurtful things, harmful things. None of us, of course, but other people. People are mean, on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand, what we find out is that terrible things do happen. I mean, maybe it is the case that somewhere in the area of Elisha, back there someday when somebody was telling stories that a bunch of boys were mauled by some bears that came out of the woods. And maybe it is the case that somebody writing this down, maybe Elisha himself, maybe one of Elisha's followers, cohorts, um, uh, minions, uh, started to tell a story of why it was that those bears mauled the boy, the boys, because they'd been taunting Elisha. Well, I, this seems far-fetched to me. What does not far-fetched to me, seem far-fetched to me, is that bad things happen. Attacks by wild animals happen. Um, natural disasters happen. Horrible accidents resulting in death and disfigurement happen. 
This is true, it hasn't stopped being this way. What we have really stopped, by and large, but not entirely, in some segments of Christianity and religion, what we've, tried to, what we've really stopped is trying to assign causation to those that make it clear that it was always God's divine will anyway, that those 42 boys got mauled by those bears. Ugh, gross. I don't think so. There's another lesson that we should learn from observing these two lessons, that people are mean and that accidents and natural disasters happen. And here is the other lesson that I think we should learn from this, that the gospel is not magic. We want it to be, desperately want it to be magic. We want to be, we want to be able to say, all we need to do is utter God's name in just the right volume, place, whatever, and all will be well. But we've tried it, haven't we? I mean, we've asked, we've tried uttering God's name, saying our prayers, falling to our knees, offering whatever we can offer, making deals with God, etc., in the hopes that the gospel would work like magic, that if we could just master the spells and the incantations, then we'd be protected, then we'd be safe, then we'd get what we want. But it doesn't work that way. Because love doesn't work that way, and what the gospel is, is love, not magic. And love is not magic. Love is a powerful force that can overcome everything, but it takes effort and work, and it is subject to resistance that will prevent it from accomplishing its goals, its means, and its ends. And the gospel is love, not magic. People are mean, disasters and accidents happen, and the gospel is not magic. But the gospel is love. The gospel is the thing that gives us life. The gospel is our hope for salvation. And the gospel is the reason that we should examine our own hearts so that we are prepared to engage meaningfully with a world in which people are mean and natural disasters, and other non-natural disasters for that matter, happen too. Because in such a world, love is desperately needed. Love is desperately needed. I don't understand the parable of the unjust judge in, it, in, the, in the way that if I was Jesus' publisher, I would say, let's leave that out. But what I do understand is that Jesus tells us, before he even starts to tell, or St. Luke, I guess, tells us, what, because St. Luke must have known that we were gonna struggle with this one, right? He must have thought to himself, ooh, I don't like this parable either. That's what I've got to work with, and I gotta deal with it. So St. Luke tells us that Jesus told a parable about the need to pray always. He didn't tell a parable about how God is just. He didn't tell a parable about how it is that justice will prevail. No, St. Luke is deliberately telling us those are not the point of the story. And if you think you're going to get the point, those points out of the story, you're wrong. The point of this story is to say, pray always. It's the only reasonable point you're going to get out of this story. Look elsewhere, and it's not going to go well for you. Luke seems to be saying to us, by omission, if Luke will allow me to speak for him, which he's been doing for some time. So um, it's time to wrap this up. God knows I've been going on, haven't I? But I mean, here we are. I have no idea what this has to do with Will of God. But, you know, presumably he had these conversations with the Franks and with the Danes and with the people of the Low Countries who also would have said to him, well, what, you know, what you, have you brought us some new magic? so that we can learn the incantations? And Willibrord would have had to say, God, no, I haven't. In fact, bears still maul people at the edge of the forest, and accidents still happen, and there are still unjust judges in the world, even though I carry this book with me, and I read about it, and I try to learn its lessons, and I believe that God wants good things for God's people, but what I know is that even though there are still bears and unjust judge judges, that there is love in this world. And in a world that has bears on the edge of the forest and unjust judges in every, in every possible city, 
We need the power of love in the world because it is the only power that will give us new life at the end of the day. When the unjust judges have done their worst and the bears have done their worst and we are sitting in our tears, in our suffering, in our sorrow, wondering what happened. And God comes to us and in love and picks us up in our sorrow and our brokenness and says, come to me, child, and let me love you. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world using form six of the prayers of the people found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our for families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Daniel, our bishop, for Britt, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially all those who are sick with the coronavirus and all those who care for them. Remembering those who, are, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice that's been denied, and who are working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society. Remembering also all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially Chris, Sue, John, George, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Alex, Rodney, Howard, Richard, Margaret, Will, Lisa, Scotty, Cindy, Eric, Shema, Rebecca, Anne, Clayton, Colin, John, Liz, Oliver, Jillian, Rick, and all those of us who we remember in the silence of our hearts. Continuing also to pray for peace in our time, for an end to the war in Ukraine and an end to warfare everywhere, for an end to the gunfire that takes so many lives in this city. Remembering also to pray for refugees in every place around the world. Praying for those who live in great poverty in too many places around the world. For those who are homeless, hungry, lost, frightened, or alone. For those who have been exploited or abused. For those who are struggling with addiction or suffering with mental illness. For those who are languishing in prison, especially those who have been wrongfully sentenced and those who have been sentenced to death and remembering all those who suffer in any way, in body, mind, or estate. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, giving thanks especially for the beauty of this day, giving thanks for all those who help us to offer hospitality in this place and parish, giving thanks for all those who support this place with their financial gifts, and for all those who've made pledges for support for the coming year. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Remembering especially all those who have died from the coronavirus in the past day, and remembering, the, remembering those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. 
known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark the Evangelist, with blessed Willibrord, and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of Christ, and the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.